my wife says no sound thank you watching your back anyway welcome to uh mary walter radio the podcast i had my mic turned off because in the very very beginning you heard me saying ah you're like screaming and you heard the cat screaming because my one cat oliver loves this outfit this is fleece and it's a onesie i do own a onesie and it's so warm and it's like 44 degrees today at the Jersey shore with, um, and, and it's just been raining and it's just that cold that goes through you. And of course the heat's not on in our house because we like to save money because we're cheap. And so, um, so, uh, it's, it's, I've been cold. So I put this on, it's, it's just, I just love this. It's so warm. It has a hood. See, it has a hood. I can put up here like this. And if I'm really, really cold, I put this on my little, my little warm Walmart fur there. Um, so I can just kind of like let it sit there. And, um, so, so he loves this. So he sit on my lap and he started kneading, he started making muffins, which squeaky knows about this. Ron has, I don't know, like 18 cats. And, and so he starts kneading and he, they all just got Manny Petties. They all just had their manicures and pedicures like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But I think I was going to need a transfusion. He was drawing blood. So I had to get him off of me. So that was the problem with that. So that was the screeching cat when you, when I first came on. So I turned my microphone off so you didn't hear me when I first said hello. And so sorry about that. Uh, we now have Howard Bernstein. Here he is. Hello, Howard. How are Hi. you? I am recuperating. You see the brace here from, uh, I had rotator cuff and a bicep tendon repair on the 18th. So 15 days ago. Wow. And have you, have you been through this? The shoulder thing? Not rotator cuff. I have had a shoulder surgery. I had two surgeries on my left shoulder. And I actually tore the glenoid off the bone. So that's what holds your arm in to the socket. And they wow. had to um, drill holes in the bone and then they sew it back on and stick yeah, I've got back the, in. <laughs> I've got the holes because they've got a suture to the tendon back and then the bicep to the labrum. Same the thing. labrum's torn. It, you know, so it, and, uh -huh. and if you've ever had a broken bone, it hurts. It's just that simple. It's just Two weeks out, it hurts. Just doesn't hurt as much, and I'm sure in another two weeks it'll be a lot better. But it's a process, yeah. and you know, whatever. It just I haven't been able to drive, so I've only got out a few times. And my wife has been gracious enough to take me, you or she's so gracious enough to just order you an Uber so that you just get out of the house. Uh, you know, it was a rainy day here, and uh, I'm in central <laughs> Pennsylvania near Altoona, so it's kind of a rainy, wet, chilly day, kind of a crappy day. So. It was okay. Well, that's what I was saying. That's why I have my, I have a fleece onesie on that even, that has a fur, well, faux fur, a Walmart fur version of fur, uh, a hood. And with my little, my little Walmart version thing, you know, so it looks like, like it's real. And I love this. It's a onesie. It was one of the best things I ever bought at Walmart ever. And, um, it's just cold and I don't care if everybody says, but it's, it's warm. It's not warm. It's like 44 degrees and you, raining. You, it's disgusting. You do freezing. have heat insulation in your house, don't you? We do, but the heat's not on. You so. know, well, I mean, that sounds like a you problem. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm unemployed. So I have my little space heater here that if, but there are at my feet that's really warm. And tomorrow I had a, actually had to go out to physical therapy for my other shoulder today. So, you so know, right. I, I, um, I'll make a fire tomorrow and I'm really good at making like roaring fires. So, by the way, I had an opportunity to do a little radio here. And oh, I had really? I, I I couldn't commit. It would have been tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday in the mornings, uh, just from eight to nine on, on a local uh, AM talk, uh, AM FM talker here in Altoona. And I I hope we can make something happen in the future. But I was recuperating from this, and you know, with your hand in a sling, tough to do things on the computer. So I just, as much as I wanted to, I couldn't commit. Oh. And hopefully, hopefully, the opportunities will still be there down the road because yeah. we've been talking for for many months and. Um, you know, radio, as you and I discussed, Mary, you've done it far more than I have, but there's something a lot freer than television because generally you have a, a looser clock. You've got a few hard outs you've got to hit for sure, like half hour, an hour things, but generally radio allows you to finish the thoughts before, you know, the segment ends and then you could, you know, float that break a little bit and yeah. you don't have that luxury so much in, in live television. Yeah, absolutely. So we have four different things that we want to talk about today. Okay. So we're going to get to it. Um, as always, I will put your comments up on the screen. If you have not done so, please like the podcast. You know, you can go through and you can look at old, older 
podcasts and and you can watch them and like them please if you do watch them um if you don't like them it really screws up the algorithm so please don't do that to me um don't screw up the algorithm for god's sakes it's as bad as crossing the streams it is please don't screw up the algorithm and, know, that's in honor uh, of obviously the ghostbuster remake uh, or not remake, a sequel uh, that's been out recently yes. And if you have not done so, please subscribe to the channel. Speaking of which, I owe uh, a lot of thank yous to people who have subscribed to the channel that I haven't um, really um, been able to thank lately because I have not been here. So uh, Drake Allen, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Big Head, New Jersey. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's that's, almost, that's almost redundant, isn't it? <laughs> Rick, Rick Folked um south paw and robert charette thank you so much for joining the channel we do appreciate you and please go back you'll there's lots of guests that you could see there there are some with guests some without guests um we have a lot of fun you can sort them if you go to mary walter look go to youtube look for mary walter radio and if you click on live it will show you all the past podcasts you can sort them by the the latest one the most popular one the oldest ones so um, um yeah we really appreciate you doing that also the audio is available on apple podcasts and spotify after the show so, so you do this well. alone you've done this alone oh yeah see to me that's be that's that much more difficult i think to be a solo in anything. And if you ever watch an infomercial, right, there's the host and the expert. I guess when Billy Mays was alive, he was one of the few people in Sully who could pull off an infomercial by themselves. But almost every show, infomercial, et cetera, has one host, one expert. And and radio or TV, there are very few anchors. And you you know, forgive me and that I have not witnessed your brilliance solo. Uh, but uh, you, you might be you might be doing a great job solo, but I just think as a general rule in any sort of media. Um, having somebody to feed off of is always better. No. Radio, the only show that's usually an ensemble is mornings. Every other show is um, usually uh, solo. Every other day plays solo except for mornings. No. Callers. You can have guests, or but, um, but Mark Levin rarely has guests. Mm. Sean Hannity were on their radio show. Um, Boy, how know, angry would he be if he had a guest, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, when I first started out in radio, I never had guests. I did I did four hours by myself five nights a week with callers, and you, you take callers, and or you you know learn to be interesting. So are you quiet at home? Are you talked out for the day, or does your husband get any uh, feedback from you? Well, see you the not? difference. Yeah, no, it's 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 when I was doing that show, I was working evenings. He was working during the day. We literally never saw each other Monday through Friday. We would see each other Friday night when I came home. Well, that, which was actually Saturday morning because I got, I went till 11 o'clock or midnight, depending on the, the, the shift at the time. So I, he'd be asleep. So I would see him Saturday morning and then I wouldn't see him again the next Saturday morning. <laughs> it's great. That's a, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Scott says it's getting to be warmer weather here in Kentucky. Yeah, but Kentucky's getting into uh, tornado season, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Right? You know, this is the time of year, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, somebody who obviously has a degree in atmospheric science and spent decades doing TV weather. If you don't have a plan before it hits the fan, before the tornado warning is issued, you know, so it's not the time to start thinking about it. You have to have that plan and then execute it, right? A failure to plan yep. is a plan to fail. So it's just that simple. The other reality though, Mary, which is really sad is you can't save everybody. And and I, I don't say that lightly, but that's the reality. We see people stay for hurricanes. We see people who are living in mobile home parks and don't have a shelter. And that may be part of the economic reality of their life or the shelter is just not there in that particular mobile home park. You know, for whatever reason, as difficult a reality as it is, you can't save everybody. And we see that in not just in, in weather and stuff, in, in many areas yeah. of life, unfortunately. And for people who don't know, I, I, I guess I just assume that everyone knows who you are, because I think this is oh. like the third time you've been on the podcast. Howard is a meteorologist. He is a news anchor. He does it all. He, he's, he's a commentator. So Renaissance he's man, I think is a good term. What did you call yourself? Renaissance man, how's Renaissance that? Man. Yes, because he also actually has have a home friend, improvement. <laughs> I have a friend too who actually refers to me as a Renaissance man, which there I think is a very flattering label 
of uh, yes, you know we all have many labels and i you know i don't i don't give myself that label i'm just my friend pete who lives out on the left coast he he calls me that all right well pete i think is right so let's all right let's get into this so some news to the news that broke today and if you don't watch newsmax or fox or listen to a conservative uh radio talk show which I think almost all talk shows are conservative radio talk shows. They tried it with Air America. They tried a liberal talk uh, Bill, radio Bill format. Press, right? B- Bill right? Press, yes. Yeah, he was pretty good. At, at, and Hannity's partner, Alan Combs, I thought, was a very reasonable uh, liberal. Yep. But, you know, he has since, since passed away. But there are a few of them who have ventured into that realm and not been successful for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is I just don't think that liberals really listen to talk radio. I just don't think they do. Um, let's see. As Scott says, uh, Louisville, they've just now been sounding the weather alert sirens and put radio alerts out just now. They're getting, um, I know a lot of rain. I have a friend who lives there. I know here on the East Coast, we got our um, coastal flood warning. All phones go off and everything else, you know, move the cars. No, it's you know, worse than that. Blah, blah, blah. It's worse than that. Northern Kentucky, Southern Ohio, maybe even parts of Western West Virginia have a real tornadic threat this evening. So that's, you oh, know, okay. So if you've got your weather radio or your alert set on your phone and they go off, take shelter, will become secondary to your safety. Yes, 100%. But only a, a, a close second. Take the radio in with you. For the phone <laughs> there you go. You can do both. Multitask. All right. So today was a big day. Uh, got Judge Michael Scarcy. Most people have never heard of Judge Michael Scarcy. He is a federal judge. And he denied a motion today by Hunter Biden's team to dismiss the charges against him for the tax evasion. And I believe also, uh, well, these are for just the tax evasion charges. He is being prosecuted by DOJ special counsel David Weiss on both tax charges and felony gun charges, not FARA charges. Did you notice that? He's getting away with the not registering as a foreign agent charges. The reason for that is that goes back to the big guy. But remember, that's what put Paul Manafort in prison. Is it beyond any statute of limitations or is it still within that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, It it, must be okay if they're going to file that, but yeah, I mean, I, I heard some of this where the argument was that, uh, you know, this was like politically motivated. But if it was politically motivated, why are you taking deductions for the expenses for the trips, for the escorts, for it, all of these miscellaneous things? If it if it wasn't fraud, why was there a deduction attempted to be taken? Exactly. And I think that's where the judge was like, yeah, no, we're going to go to trial with this. Yeah, he, he rejected all of Hunter Biden's arguments to, dimi- to, to dismiss the charges, ruling that the government's case does have enough merit to go to trial. His attorneys had argued, to your point, Howard, that the charges should be dismissed due to a prior plea agreement. Remember the plea agreement they had in June of last year that fell apart in front of the judge who actually read the plea agreement and said, wait a minute. That was tossed this- out like Earl Weaver in the Orioles games years ago. And Billy Martin, if you want to go for the old manager, that thing was tossed by a, a, a judicious judge, not a not an activist judge. Yeah. So what's happening? This judge uh, said, "Wait a minute. This holds you. You know, this this clears you of anything, even things that you haven't been charged with yet, like forever. What kind of weird weird deal is this? No, that doesn't work. You can't be like it was. It was like a get out of jail free card from now for all eternity. And the judge said no. And I believe that was a woman. Was that Eileen Cannon or somebody else? Maybe it's somebody else. I, I, you know, it, it was. A, it was a female. I can't think of the name. But it also goes back to the question: Is how did Weiss, after negotiating the sweetheart deal, end up as the special counsel? He should have been right. probably tossed aside and bring somebody else in who doesn't at least have the appearance of partiality here. Right? Exactly. You don't, so that that question still lingers. And but maybe Weiss at this point realizes he's got to play, you know, play it by the book since they got caught in Delaware with the shenanigans. I don't know. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think Hunter's going to spend a day in jail and he's getting away with the most egregious charges. The most egregious tax charges were allowed to expire. The statute of limitations were allowed to expire on the most egregious charges. And um, there he's not being charged with Farrah. Th- that's the it, worst stuff he's not being charged with. But don't you believe, regardless of whether Biden is reelected or not, that he pardons or, or commutes at least his son's sentence, he's not going to allow his son to go to jail. He's going to use the power that he has as long as he's president to, even if he loses, to, to, to pardon his son, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, I can't see him not, not exercising that power. 
Yeah, I would probably. in this situation. Honestly, Hunter could use a few days in jail because he's never had consequences for his actions, which is why he's almost a 60 year old. We're supposed to feel sorry for him. He's 60 year old. He's Joe Biden's son. So everything he does, we're supposed to feel sorry for him. Like he's, because he's a, a drug grown addict. adult. <laughs> That's yeah. Oh, here it is. I knew Greg would come through. Greg says, Judge Mary Ellen Norieka. Thank you, Greg. There you go. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate you. I knew he would know that. Um, okay. So he also, so the, the, so she threw that out. He, the, uh, he also argued that the prosecution against him was vindictive, which I think is hilarious, uh, and motivated by political reasons. Again, hilarious as well as violated the constitutional separation of powers and his due process rights, all of which the judge tri the trial judge dismissed in an 82 page ruling. <laughs> Your camera's fine. Leave it alone. <laughs> oh, um, oh, your, your sounds off. You, you muted yourself. It would be interesting to know if president Biden can just nullify all of Hunter's charges. Maybe that's a good question. I don't know. Um, the judge in his ruling said the defendant asserts he is situated similarly to individuals who did not timely pay income tax for the year 2019, but received leniency due to COVID-19 relief programs. The government alleges that the defendant's non-payment extended well before the emergence of COVID-19. <laughs> so therefore that had nothing to do with anything. Hunter Biden was indicted on nine federal charges of tax evasion, tax fraud, and failure to file taxes for the years 2016 through 2019. They allege that Hunter Biden, instead of paying the more the 1.4 million in taxes, you know, his fair share, uh, he reportedly owed, he instead used the money for payments for basically hookers and blow. Um, so, Mary, Hunter, let me ask you this though: if, if the statute of limitations expires from a legal perspective, can Comer's committee still explore that? from an impeachment perspective, because an impeachment is not a legal proceeding, it's a political proceeding. Yeah, but this is against Hunter. What are they gonna impeach? No, no, I understand, I understand that, but if they can connect Hunter's uh, tax, not, not filing taxes because it would connect him to his dad, and, and if they connect those dots, then they could, I think. Oh, sure. And, 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 I'm, and I'm speculating here, I have no inside knowledge of anything, yeah. but I'm, I'm thinking it's still open in an impeachment inquiry as opposed to the, the, the criminal stuff is statute of limitations yeah. that's that's done yeah 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 no I, th I i think they can still go after him for that um I, I think that that's fully open for for joe but i do find it interesting that they are going to let it go through and to your to your point howard i um i don't know how much of a show trial this is you know i i don't know how much i believe this i don't think i don't think hunter goes to jail but at the same time, because his date's in August, right in the middle of election, right in the middle of the election proceedings, right? If they come down with a judgment after the election, they could wait. And maybe that's why it's August and they're not fast tracking it like they're fast tracking everything that Trump does. 30 days to come up with half a billion dollars. You know, that's that's fair. That's fine. They're you know, not I, fast tracking Hunter. Uh, by the way, I've asked people who are very liberal, very uh, uh, Trump hating. I said, whether you agree or disagree with the verdict, do you think that the four hundred and fifty billion million dollars was fair or a violation of the Eighth Amendment? And I have not come across anybody who is a self-proclaimed liberal who believes that that wasn't fair, who thinks it is oh, fair and, is decent, and it's not a violation of the Eighth Amendment. And and to me, it's like, how is it not a violation of the Eighth Amendment? Right. I mean, we don't have to like. Trump and we could think what he did was completely wrong and fraudulent. But separate that from is it reasonable to find somebody that much just so they can appeal? It's it seems right. to be anti uh, our whole everything that's in the constitution right. for due process, your right to defend yourself, all of it. It just seems it seems wrong on so many levels to me. But right. you know, I'm I'm able to separate things, other people are not. That, and that's the problem. You have to put it in terms that they can understand. Trump's so rich, he can afford half a billion dollars. That's fine. So you look at them, and if you know like how much their house is worth, and you say, okay, well, what's your house worth? Like a million bucks or half a million dollars? House worth half a million dollars. And you probably got a good IRA, et cetera. So for you, the equivalent would be $2 million if you want to appeal the case. Is that fair? Right. Or even and then come up, or come up with $500,000 in cash. 
How many yeah, people but, can come up with five hundred thousand dollars in cash in a week and right. a half? Right. Exactly. But that. But and that's the, to your exactly. You have to put it in terms that they can understand because they just hate Trump so much that to, though the, then you know, to that's fair because they don't care as long as it hurts Trump. It's fair. But yep. when you put it in terms that relates to them, I think it's a lot different. And they go, well, like, well, that would be fair, right? If I gave you, right. you know, two weeks. And to by the way, with, you know, I'm not saying I love him or hate Trump. I'm just talking about the fairness and the Eighth Amendment. And, yep. and I would argue even the 14th Amendment uh, issues on this. The, because according to even the New York governor, oh, it's a one-time thing. Well, how is that not a 14th Amendment violation then? Right? right. Equal protection under the law. So. Uh, I didn't go to law school, but if you just have common sense and can read, these things seem to be wrong. But when you understand that this isn't about justice and when you understand that yeah. this is election interference, we, we know that they've all met Jack Smith. We know the people from Fannie Willis's office, Nathan Wade, Letitia James, all met with people at the White House. This is coordinated. This is coordinated election interference. Putin is is so proud of Joe Biden right now. He's like, good boy. Wow, I'm jealous. Joe's I've had doing a great job. My son is going to be 24. And I've talked to him about it. I said, you know, the problem is that Trump might have legitimately broken some laws, maybe even with the document handling, right? But with all of these other prosecutions, the Georgia election cases we were talking about and, and the impeachments that were thrown out by the Senate and all the other things, the water is so muddy. How do you know? How do you know if it's a legitimate prosecution or a, per, a political persecution? And that's the difficulty I have going forward with, with any of this, because I'm still open to the fact that there might be something legitimate in one of these 91 indictments. But I still am so skeptical on probably 85 of the 91 indictments that it muddied the it muddies the water for me. And as right. a voter. As a voter, you know, it's like if they're doing all of this, how if they get away with it, right? What what message if the left gets away with it? How are they going to be held accountable if they're not well, they're voted not. out of office? They're not right? You might not like Trump. I'm not happy about the choices we have. But if if the left gets away with what they did and they're not held accountable, then where then what are they going to do to others in the future? So it's right. This is well, this here, is what I wrestle with. Well, here's the thing. Once I found out that representatives from Nathan Wade, Fannie Willis, Jack Smith, and um, New York went to and met at different times with people in the White House, I was done. It, as far as I'm concerned, it's all political. Why are why are they for look for something that's happening in New York State meeting at the White House? Who are they meeting? What are they meeting about? Why? Same thing yeah. with Fulton County, Georgia. To me, at that point, it's political and I'm done. I don't care if you did break the law at that point. Isn't it, isn't it Bonnie done. Willis, not Fannie Willis? Like like Fanny, it matters. Yeah, Fannie, Fanny, my Fanny. ass. <laughs> but, but how, and I find it interesting that A, she wasn't thrown off the case, and B, they're now appealing that, her not being thrown off the case, too. So the whole yeah. thing, you know, just uh, stinks like uh, red Georgia mud. Yes, watching your back says it's throwing mud against the wall and seeing yeah. what sticks. Exactly. Yeah. And it's red all Georgia being coordinated. Mud. It's all being coordinated. Yeah. One political opponent, the party in power, is pros persecuting another political opponent. Look what they're doing to RFK Jr., right? So if you don't, they're, they're, they're keeping him off the ballot. They're doing everything they can to keep him off the ballots in states. So if they're doing that to one of their own, what do you think they're going to do to Trump? Well, they don't think I mean, he's one of their own. Well. Because he's he's not following the, the mantra of, of exactly. the, the, you know, the playbook is X. And he's yes. he's doing his own thing. So exactly. he's, he's not. So anybody who's not in line, as opposed to the folks on the right, like, you know, like, like Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about vacating Johnson. Yeah, how'd that work out for Matt Gates? And I understand you're angry and I don't disagree with that. But but if you're going to do that and, and I'm, Matt Gates also should have had a plan. They should have known yes. what the, where the dominoes were going to fall, not just not just start, you know, 100%. throwing, throwing, uh, you know, Molotov cocktails at the whole party and wondering who's going to get burned, who isn't going to get burned. I mean, if you're no, not taking yeah. this out, I mean, the, the whole thing's a mess. And if if the opposition party loses, it's their own fault. And and it usually is their own so, fault, by the way. I, I want to go back to your 24 year old son. And yeah. I assume you are Jewish, correct? Race Jewish. I'm kind of atheist at this stage of my life, if I'm going to be honest with you. OK. Uh, and were you, but were your children re raised religious or not? Uh, yeah, he went to Hebrew school, had a bar mitzvah, but uh, he also was like, uh, you know. Okay. The we're, very, I, we're very skeptical. 
the reason I ask is James Carville uh, put out a video. Oh, wait, hold on very quickly. United for Trump Georgia 2024 says RFK Jr. is going to pull more votes away from Biden than Trump. Yes. A lot of the never Trumpers are coming back to him, especially after Biden hijacked Easter Sunday with his trans holiday and then lied about it, which I love, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, but, I but, think- but did they not? A, and I'm gonna let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say March 31st was always trans Sunday. If that's the case, hear me out, hear me out. I'm listening. Even if that was, you know, it's like this is whatever month and that's month and this, you know, for every Black History Month, March was Women's History Month. Every day there's like 45,000 things. It's, you know, it's like a Black Labrador Day or something tomorrow. I don't know. But with that being said, are they not checking the calendar knowing that it falls with Easter Sunday and there should be conflict and maybe they shouldn't? I mean, it's funny, I was watching Kirby uh, doing one of his pressers today um, or, or at the White House. He was, I believe, National Security Spokesman John Kirby, if, I, if I've got his title correctly. Yes, John Kirby, and you've, yes. seen, and you've seen him, around. He was with the Defense Department or Pentagon before uh, this administration. And you've seen him before. He's, he's, you don't have to like him or, or agree with him, but compared to the current White House Chief Press Secretary, KJP, the guy should, Kirby should have that job because he's so much better at carrying the water and answering questions and not being confrontational than the actual person with the job. It's, it's, it's embarrassing when I see Kirby and what good a job he does at the podium compared to the lady who has the job. Well, she, she, she does what she's supposed to do and she's no offense to diversity hire. So there you go. Uh, yeah. United for United for Trump 2024, Georgia. Thank you for following my page. Absolutely. Find him on X United for Trump united for trump 2024 georgia um all right so just very quickly the transgender day of visibility don't want to go off on a tangent here but joe biden did re- put out there's a presidential document that went out that said i joseph r biden jr do hereby proclaim march 31st 2024 as transgender day of visibility now obama started it in a surprise to no one and Joe Biden signed that, and that was put out by the White House. But yet during the Easter egg roll on Monday, which was not allowed, and no religious symbols were allowed at it, on the Easter, uh, during the White House Easter which egg Which is funny roll, because obviously if it's an Easter egg roll, there's a religious connotation to the whole event. No, it's all about bunnies, chicks, and eggs, and candy. Yeah, um, because- Just like Christmas, Christmas is, is not about the manger scene. It's all about Christmas trees and snowflakes. Hey, look, even you know, I know- Christmas trees, right? Even I know Easter's about the resurrection, okay? Uh, uh, but he, he said that he didn't do that. He did not proclaim it. He, uh, he didn't do that, but he signed the document. So he lied. Either that or he didn't sign the document and someone else did it for him. And or maybe he he's doing what he's told. Well, there you go. But- Oh, well, Gregory says Kirby's a much better provocateur. Yes, he is. Uh, United for Trump. Hi, say hi to the Oyster Bunny. Oyster yeah, bunny, here yeah. the Oyster Bunny. So let's get back to James Carville here because we have two other okay. topics to get to yet. <clears throat> James Carville said, um, he, he said that, um, there, that he's talking about the polling and about Democrats voting blocks that have been secure for, for the Democrats leaving in droves. And in during his 2020 election, Joe B- excuse me, Joe Biden in February polling data was supported by 52 percent of Americans aged 18 to 34, 52 percent. Now, because most of the very young part of that, especially the young women, are just crazy far left liberal psychopaths, right? Those are the these are the people who think that what Hamas did on October 7th was acceptable. Remember, 18 right. to 24 year olds, it was 52 to 48 percent. And I told my son, who's going to be 24, I said, your age group sucks. And he says, I know, Dad, I know. But that age group, again, thinks, it, the majority, at least the slim majority, that October 7th was okay, that beheading babies, mutilating women, raping women was okay right. and justifiable. His age group is also the group that's going to go to war that Joe Biden's going to get us into. But they're going to vote for it, and then they're going to be shocked when their number's called. Uh, Trump received 48% of that group in February polling data. But in 2020, past elections, it was a much different tale. And James Carville said, I've been very vocal about this. It's horrifying our numbers among younger voters, particularly younger blacks, younger Latinos, younger people of color, particularly males. We're not shedding them. They're leaving in droves. So in 2020, according to Pew, Biden, they found that 59 percent of voters aged 18 to 20 to 29 voted for Biden. 
Trump received 33%. Trump's now up to 48%. And Biden's down to 52. And so, in those swing states, that could have a significant uh, effect on who wins those swing states. Because, look, there's strong red, strong blues, but those swing states, we, let's face it, the 20% in the middle is going to decide the election. Yes. Well, yes, but I, uh, not necessarily, though, because I think that that James Carville is right. With the shift you're seeing is the left has gone so far to the left. We've been talking before about the black vote, the Latino vote, how they're moving closer to Trump, especially the males, right? Especially the men. Latino women, though, also moving to Trump because they're more religious. They tend to be Christian. They tend to be Catholic. So they're going toward not not the Catholic Joe Biden. They're going to Trump. The guy who didn't want to close the churches for Chris, you know, for during and, and temples and places of worship during how COVID. is that not a First Amendment violation? I, I don't understand how that was allowed to happen at all because no law shall abridge your right to practice, basically, in the yeah. First Amendment. I know I'm not verbatim there, but uh, I, I never mm-hmm. understood, I never understood how the government got away. Again, you're talking to a guy who doesn't believe, right? But, but certainly supports those who do. I never understood how that was allowed to happen. And that's and the other reason they're going is abortion. Democrats are hanging their hat on the young women, female vote, wanting to be able to kill their babies while they're being born. Right. But the vast majority of people in this country don't like that. The vast majority of people in this country aren't looking at an eight month pregnant woman going, oh, sure, you should be allowed to abort that baby. And so you have a lot of, again, Hispanic women and Hispanic men who don't think that that's a good idea. As I do, I think most Americans don't think that's a good idea. But so, right, I mean, what's the compromise, though? Because you have the well, anti-abortion people, the pro-life. I don't think hardly anybody wants live birth abortions, right? So is there is 26 weeks is the second is, is, is you know, I, I don't know. To- I don't know what the answer is, but there's got to be a compromise somewhere. They're going to have to listen every day. All, the left wants us to be like Europe and most European, most European countries is 12 weeks. You want us to be like Europe? OK, 12 weeks. Do you make exceptions if the mother's life is in jeopardy after 12 weeks? I, 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 th- or not? I think, yes, I think if the, mo- if the mother is going to die, then I think you can make you. I think that decision at that point as a practicing Catholic, I think that decision has to be between the mother, the father, the baby and their God. Right. You know, I, no, I, I, and I'm just asking questions right. because I, and these are and questions think, that will have if, to be answered. Right. So. So. And everybody's like, what about rape or incest? I'm like, really, how many cases of rape or incest results in a pregnancy? I want the numbers before you start using that that argument. Well, I don't know. I'm like, well, if you don't know, then you're making a dumb argument. I, I want to I want to hear. I want if there's been a rape. I want to give me the police report. I want to know that crime's been reported that there's, you know, and yeah. OK, I'm OK then. Well, what if she didn't report it? Well, and, and, you know, what if an alien came down and impregnated her? I, 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 you know, I think there's gotta be some guidelines. That's just me. But the other problem they have is one that James Carville talks about is these young kids to your, to what you said to your son, your generation sucks because they think they're, they're out there queers for Palestine because they're morons. I think you should take those queers, drop them off in Palestine and see what happens to them. That is a little harsh, isn't it? Why? Why? They're all for Palestine. Why is that harsh? Yeah. Well, That's because they're advocating for them. A... We're queers. We're for Palestine. Okay. Let me take you there. Let's take you there. Well, See maybe just one. I don't think you need to send them all. Just take one. They get the message. They maybe they, maybe they understand. I got news for you. If they're all sitting in the middle of my highway, I am more than happy to round them up, take their bus right to the airport, and say, adios, it's all on me. Hey, maybe uh, Greg Abbott can uh, hire a charter yeah. a jet form. But but there's a, the other divide in the Democratic Party. So you have the divide with people who also, you know, like live along the border who were true blue and now have illegals running into their kids' schools and they have to have lockdowns. That happened in New Mexico yesterday, uh, today, yesterday. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Because I'm hype. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> two. Okay. I'm done. Can you stop at two or do you ever have like four or five in a row or just? Uh, no, I, my husband can do up to eight. Um, I'm two. I had a colleague uh, who would go like 10 or 12. It was unbelievable. It's annoying after a while. He was a, ma- like, he was a machine gun. Yeah, just come on. Yeah. Anyway. So, but anyway, so so you have the divide. As, as, as the infiltration from the border is now in every state, you've got that divide. The divide I think that Joe has the hardest time with at this point that affects more groups than ever is the Israel-Gaza, Israel-Hamas 
divide, right? We know that um, I think Barack Obama is driving this this policy. Barack Obama hated Netanyahu, didn't like Israel, and yet Netanyahu come in the he back door of the White House. He actively campaigned against Netanyahu's re-election years ago. And exactly. He, you know, which, which when we were, you know, making all this noise about uh, Russians or whomever meddling in our elections, we've been meddling in other elections forever yep. ourselves. Exactly. So there was a hypocrisy exactly. there. It's just some. Thank you, Gregory. He said, God bless you. So, By the way, but, your, your voting block thing too, right? About losing. Why would the Jewish voting block, given the policy that the current administration has, it, which seems to be somewhat anti-Israeli, our only uh, ally and the only uh, you know, democracy in the Middle East, why would the Jewish bloc in the United States so strongly support and continue to support what this administration is doing, what Chuck Schumacher, right, which is probably a Jewish man in and of itself, said recently, too, um, forgetting that there are still, well, not forgetting, but seemingly to uh, omitting that there are still American hostages being held by Hamas from October 7th. So I don't understand oh. why the Jewish bloc is still so strongly Democrat. Let the Catholic girl who lives in New Jersey tell you. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Reformed Jews are much more liberal. They don't care about Israel. They're American Jews. And American Jews and Israeli Jews are very different. I know Israeli Jews and I know American Jews. And American Jews, a lot of them, they don't care about Israel. It doesn't matter to them. They don't live there. It doesn't figure in their world. They're reformed Jews. They're more liberal Jews. They're the Democrats. The Hasidic Jews, the Sephardic Jews, they are much more likely to be Repub more conservative, especially the Hasidic Jews. We know with their dress and the whole bit. They are much more conservative and they are true red Trump voters. Absolutely. Because I see them at the gun range all the time. And they are Trump supporters all the way. When they did um, in 2020, they had a rally on the Garden State Parkway. They had one in every state the weekend before the election. They had the big car rallies. And there were these young Jewish boys, these, I guess, men, uh, they were old enough to vote, you know, late teens, early 20s, which I thought was hilarious because some of them were pickup trucks, which from Lakewood, Hasidic Jews, it's weird. But they had the Trump flag, the American flag and the Israeli flag. So there is a, and a very good friend of mine who is um, he's not he's kind of reformed Jewish. He's not really super practicing. But he said what you have to understand is there are a lot of self-loathing Jews in this country. <laughs> you know, I was I was sitting I was sitting in Temple years ago and I, I envisioned this uh, Larry David sort of situation with a, the, the recently passed Richard Lewis next to him with a rabbis up there giving a sermon and it's just boring as all hell. And, and, and Larry would be like, Richard, oh, this is awful. He's like, shh. He's like, no, no, no. Why do we have to suffer? What are you, what are you talking about? This sermon, it's awful. And then Richard would be like, because we're Jews. Our father suffered. Their father suffered. It's part of that. <laughs> it's part of who we are. The suffering is who we are. And Larry's like, no, not anymore. And then I, I have a whole tangent where I go off. And I, I practically wrote a, a, a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode about it. Episode. But, um, <laughs> I, will, I will tell you that offline. But, but I've had this. I do, but I think everybody could relate sitting in, in a religious service where, you know, the person leading it is giving a sermon and just missing the mark, boring the hell out of you, bad public speaker, just, you, you, you're looking at your watch wondering when this crap is going to end. And, oh, and yeah. if I'm wrong, so be it. No, but that's, that's it, very true. Been there, done that. It, Porsche reform says the Jewish hard left. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very, yeah. um, and, and to what, what you're just saying about a Jew's suffering, one yeah. of a very good friend of mine I've known for decades and, He's, you know, he's Jewish, but he's also socialist and he doesn't care about Israel, doesn't have a lot of money. So he's not like very wealthy, but doesn't care about Israel. But I'll never forget one time he, he was complaining that he couldn't lose weight. And I'm like, I've known you for 20 years and you've been overweight your entire life. And I've been listening to do nothing but complain about being overweight for 20 years. And he said, I'm Jewish. It's what we do. And I said, well, uh, I'm Catholic, so I either shut up or change it. I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> you ever been to a diner with some old Jewish folks who were like very picky about how everything is, is the, the, the coffee and, and no to no butter on oh, the yeah. toast? Y'all, I mean, I've got I've got a cousin Larry who is is he's a riot to, to eat with because the the you know and my brother uh, he passed away a couple of uh, summers ago, but he said um, age magnifies idiosyncrasies. 
Um, so sometimes going out to eat with some older relatives is trying. You don't even need to do that. Go to a bris, go to a Jewish wedding, go yeah. up. We went to a bris once and we couldn't get any food. We had to go to a diner afterwards because Jews apparently circle the table and just eat off of it as they go around. They don't put anything on the plate. They just pick and they eat and they go around and they just keep going around and around and around. They don't let anybody in, especially I guess, because we didn't, we didn't have the look. And so they just kept going. And I just looked at my husband. Oh, you didn't have chicks appeal? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, let's just go to a diner. They're not gonna let us in. And they just literally pick off the plate off the, the serving thing and, and eat. I was like, and this is disgusting. So um let's go to a diner. And we did. <laughs> wow, we've gone down, we've gone down the rabbit hole, haven't we? We have. All right. Um, we're gonna get we're we are going to uh get away from the rabbit hole. Uh I want to, well, I'm out of to it. share screen here. I want to share this screen. Okay. And I hope you can hear this. I hope everything is going to go well here so you can hear this. This, um, if you want to follow this um, account on X, it is Wall Street Apes. Okay, Wall Street Apes, you can see there. Um, and I'm going to take us off, Howard. So I'm just going to have, let's see if this works like this. Does that, there we, yeah, well, let's see if that works. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll go back to that. Um, all right. So I want you to hear what he has to say here. And I'm curious to get your comments. Let me know if you guys can hear this. I hope you can. Y'all want to come with me down another rabbit hole of how the U.S. government is using private industry to fuck over the American people? This is going to be a quick video, but I wanted to put it out because I want to hear what people think. The basic gist is that the United States government is using BlackRock to permanently house all the illegal immigrants they've been letting in. So you know how companies like BlackRock have been buying up large amounts of the single family real estate? And a shitload of the properties that they bought are in the state of New York. And New York just declared that they're going to pay homeowners there $125 a day to house a migrant. $125 a day per migrant, per bedroom. That means the taxpayers of New York are going to be paying $3,750 per migrant per month. Now think about all those houses that BlackRock bought. Let's say they got a four bedroom. That means they can house four migrants. And at $3,750 per migrant, that means that property would now be bringing in $15,000 a month. And if any of those migrants have a family, that's additional money on top. And BlackRock doesn't have to worry because the money's guaranteed by the government of New York. I mean, you have to think so far in Biden's presidency, anywhere from 12 to 15 million illegals have crossed over. And then because of all the incentive programs that New York created, if you enter this country illegally, you'd have to be stupid not to go to New York. You're going to get paid. You're going to get fed. You're going to get housed all for the price of either a bus trip up there, or maybe you can catch one of those flights that Biden's been sending under everyone's radar. But regardless, you're going to go to New York where BlackRock owns thousands of homes and i'd be willing to bet a lot of those homes are about to have an illegal immigrant as a tenant and they're going to make sure they get at least one in every bedroom and i would expect that this continues at least until the census so what do you think that's a lot of money that's I 180 think... grand a year there, there on, on the house just on a four bed and that's with only four occupants and and you know there are many houses uh, I'm from Long Island, and we've heard the stories every now and then where, you know, there's a house with 24 people in it or something that right. are mostly mostly illegal immigrants who are doing whatever work under the table, and they need a place to live, and they don't have a lot of money, so they cram into one, and they're parked everywhere, and you know, until it gets out of, if it doesn't get out of hand, you know, nobody complains. If it gets out of hand, people complain, and it still takes six to twelve months before any action seems seemingly to be taken. So, it's it's an interesting hypothesis that the guy presents. You know, plausible, sure. We do know that private equity is buying up a lot of these um, housing complexes, right? So private equity is buying up. They're buying up some of the um, some of these office buildings that are being converted into apartments. Some of these other places that are being converted. There's a school down the street for us. An old school was bought up, converted into into apartments. In Boston the other day, people were upset, but it, it was a former vet's home. It's no longer a vet's home. I think it was vacant. That's going to be used to house migrants. Yep. So, but not used to house vets. Well, but it, it was no longer being used to house vets. Right. But my point is, it. it's not yeah. being, it's, it's being redone, but they're not putting vets in it. They're putting oh. illegals in it. Because there's no money this. in housing the vets. There's no. money in housing the illegals. And when the government's paying, you can make that rent whatever you want it to be. Yeah, well, I, I actually do a lot of volunteer work over with the Veterans Administration here in the Altoona area, and I drive for DAV. So I've been the last several months 
learning about uh, a lot of the plights of veterans and healthcare and stuff. It's been eye opening and, and, and mostly very rewarding too. Um, but yeah, some of these folks are not living in the greatest conditions and they're no. just getting by. You know, these are men and women who served our country and are struggling. And if it wasn't for the services of the DAV, um, they may not be able to get medical attention that they need. So do you think there are um, illegal immigrants not getting the medical attention they need? Um, perhaps, and that may be their own fear, or they're in a part of the country that it has not been established. But we know there are other places where programs are very um, gracious and generous toward mm -hmm. our, our, our illegal visitors. Our newcomers. And, and look, immigration, we need it. We don't have enough, we don't have enough of a birth rate to support the, uh, the workplace, you know, as people retire, you need to replenish that. That's just part of the natural order of things. So, you know, there is a role for legal immigration, certainly. Uh, the only other question or thought I had, Mary, was will AI be so damn productive that it will supplant some of the declining birth rates we have and make it, so? Uh, you know, you talk about Musk and other people saying, we'll need a UBI, universal basic income, because there won't be as many jobs around we'll have too many people. Uh, who knows what the future is going to hold, but these are things to contemplate in your spare time. Well, you know what's, you know what I contemplate? I listen to this and you know what I calculate out in my brain and I go, eh, I'll be dead. That's the <laughs> so, spirit. I don't that's care. The, that's, that's the positivity <laughs> from the queen right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm at that and, point and, in life where I calculate it out and I go, eh, I'll be dead. Eh, who cares? Your cat's happy. Uh, that's, that's what's important. Yeah, this is the Oliver's a little he's hungry. It's dinner time. Um, porch view. I made matzo ball soup for lunch. It was delicious. We had soup today, too. It was a very soup day. It was. Gregory says they've been planning these events for a long, long time. I tend to agree. Um, Scott says my idea is why they let so many people in here illegally is that maybe they're preparing for some kind of war. Yeah. Why are there so many military aged Chinese men coming into this country? Do you honestly think that China allows anyone out just because they're just not feeling it and they want to go to America? I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen, especially if they're military aged men. Nah, I don't think I mean, happens. they had an hour 45 phone call today, right? Who? President Xi and President Biden. They spoke Did for the Biden first time. About it? I believe it was the first <laughs> time they spoke on the phone since July 22, from what I saw from the news reports. So um, they discussed a variety of topics. I think Taiwan was among them. I'm sure trade was as well. Who knows mm -hmm. about TikTok, if that was on the agenda? Um, I think, you know, I wasn't privy to the phone call, but uh, I did hear the report that it was their first phone call in a year and a half. Well, I'm glad to see that Joe Biden is, you know, talking with world leaders and making Following sure- Following in Nixon's was, footsteps. Yeah, I think it should. And, and Obama, Obama didn't talk to a lot of world leaders either, did he? Yeah. Uh, Porchview Farm also says BlackRock Consulting is getting a lot of money advising candidates. Dolan gave them a ton of money. Yeah. Should have bought that stock back in the day. Okay. Last thing. Monday is the eclipse, solar eclipse. And it's going to go across the United States. Texas, from what I understand, is like the best spot. Like it's going right through the middle well, of Texas. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. See, this thing arcs from around San Antonio, Austin, the Dallas area, and then it comes up through the Midwest toward Ohio, and it goes from like Erie to Buffalo to Rochester. Syracuse will have just brief, the almost other north of Syracuse, toward Watertown, northern New York State, in toward uh, parts of western Maine and northern New England. And I plan, I'm in, I'm in the Altoona area. I'm going to drive, well, I'll have a friend drive. I'm not allowed to drive yet. So I'll either be somewhere from Erie to Watertown. I'm going to go see it because I understand from a friend who's seen it, you could be at 99.8% totality, or you can be in totality. And the difference literally is night and day. And we won't see another one in the continental US till 2044. I mean, Alaska will see one sooner than that. I was just reading 2044, like Montana, parts of the Northern Rockies, Northwest. So it may be the last chance in my lifetime, Mary, that I have a chance to see a total eclipse. And I figured- see? Uh, why not? It's one of those things. And, and, and maybe you're like me as we've gotten older. It's like, I want to experience things. I want to, you know, I've, I've got about as much crap as I ever really need, right? At this point, I'm going to be 58 in July, if you're wondering. Um, if you're not, I'm telling you anyway. So you just get to a point in life where I, I've had a career. I've raised a child. 
what can I start doing now? So it's either experiences for me and my wife and son together or me alone. I want experiences. I want moments. I want memories. And something as unique as a total solar eclipse, there will be others, but I don't think there'll be another one as easy for me to witness as this right. one will be. So uh, I am going to make that effort. And if you are close, and, and I think the, uh, I don't know where you are in Kentucky, who, who was on in Kentucky earlier, but yes, the path oh. goes through Kentucky. Stop. I think Paducah was, yeah, I think Paducah was in the path of the last one um, several years ago. And now this one is kind of crossing the two, the two paths there. So. You know, if you can, if you've got the time Monday, you've got the, can, not too far and you can take the day off, give yourself extra time. There'll probably be some extra traffic on the roads and, you know, should be should be quite the event. And um, from what I understand, too, you really need some sort of safety glasses and make sure they're not counterfeit because there are some oh. crap out there. That, what, yeah. What, what happens is your retina, your retina can actually be burnt, but because there are no pain nerves in your retina, you don't know it. So you could be burning oh. your, your inner eye and not know it because you won't feel it. So you, that, that's how you can do some permanent eye damage. And I have the eclipse glasses from the last one. Um, um, you know, you can also, with a little box, if you want, you make a pinhole on one end. On the other end, you just put a white sheet of paper. And the light that yes. goes through will project onto the back. And you'll be able to see as the moon comes across and the little arc cut out. You know, that's, that's a safe way to indirectly look at it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, barring unforeseen circumstances. I will be well, there. Well, there was one there was on one in twenty seven there was one in twenty seventeen and that was a that was a big yeah. dud. That was ridiculous. That was dumb. Um, why was that? How was that dumb? Because it was like nothing. I was like, that's it. I was like, well, where were you? And I where was working were... mornings, and I got up from but my where nap. Were you? Was, I was in Washington. I was in D.C. Well, yeah. It, but, you know, I remember the one in Washington, and I was working in building the USA, and the light got weird. But if you were down in South Carolina, where it's totality, because I have some friends, you making a face in there? Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> the light was weird. I got up from the my was nap weird. for the dumb thing. Well, well, in Washington, it was dumb. But, it, you know, it, and, and it started, I think, up toward the Pacific Northwest, cut across the middle of the country, as I said, Kentucky to South Carolina. Those people that saw totality were in awe. They were awestruck by the celestial event and hey mary here's something as the moon over the next 450,000 years gets farther and farther away from us and even before it, it escapes earth's gravity the solar eclipses the total ones will cease to be because the moon being farther away it just it won't have the same geometry or something well then it's so, a good thing i'll be dead by the time that happens because that'll be sad um gregory long, going long back before to that happens yeah Gregory, going back to your conversation about Joe Biden speaking to Chi, I feel sorry for the interpreter. <laughs> Which one? He also wants to know what are the odds for clear skies. I guess the question is where, <sighs> Gregory, where? Right, and and from what I've been from what I've been looking at, and I'm I'm popping on, uh, like I'm, in the background here, I'm looking at a computer model as we talk about it. Um, now the problem with Texas uh, come Monday is that Texas uh, on Monday afternoon. And, and it's just generally going to be a Monday afternoon event. Um, ooh, Monday. See, even in Ohio and Indiana and Kentucky, there's likely cloud cover. If Texas is lucky, oh, that if that storm is now looks a little faster on the long range models, but like coastal Texas, I mean, it just may be behind the front. So Texas might be okay. Arkansas may be okay. You're starting to get to Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Western PA. Then the clouds look thicker and they may even thicken up into western New York State. So I know we were thinking Erie today. I'm still I'm still thinking it might have to be Watertown or somewhere up Watertown Plattsburgh, which, you know, so now a four hour trip is now becoming an eight hour trip each way. Yeah, my my in laws have a house up at Lake George at the northern end up by Ticonderoga, and my brother in law is gonna go up to the house to watch it to see it. Diamond so. Point? North. North, yeah, God, if you haven't been to Lake George, my goodness, what a beautiful, beautiful lake. The yes. trees and the hills, and it just, I've been there several times. I went to school in Albany at SUNY. And okay. Lake George, the, uh, yeah, it's the Adirondack region north of the Capital District. It's just tremendous. It's one of the prettiest lakes, I think, in New England. 
Uh, but there's so uh, many Thomas beautiful Jefferson, lakes up there. Thomas Jefferson said it was like the most beautiful lake he he'd ever seen. Um, let's see. Scott says <laughs> welders also burn retina damage. They feel it like monster headaches next day. I'm sure they do. Uh, Gregory, the light that shines between the leaves of the trees upon the ground was in the shape of the eclipse the last time here in central Virginia. Yeah, um, that's right. The light that the leaves will also filter it out exactly, and you can see it on car hoods and with the sidewalk. Exactly correct. Um, watching your back, I was stationed in Pl at Plattsburgh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a safe uh, stationing. Like you didn't have much to worry about if you were stationed in Plattsburgh. <laughs> you never know. Um, uh, uh, what was that movie, uh, Canadian Bacon or something, with yes. John Candy years ago? That's true. And you know what? You're right because there's record number of people coming in the northern border now. So, but we're yeah. not patrolling it. So he, it's not like he would have had anything to do in Plattsburgh. Probably, so. I just read John Candy passed away 30 years ago. And and for you SCTV fans, and I am one of them, going back to when they were on WORTV before they ever hit NBC. We're talking days when Harold Ramis was on there. Joe Flaherty passed away, I believe it was earlier today or yesterday. And uh, he was one of the original okay. SCTV guys. Joe he might have been, um, was he Count Floyd? And amongst many other things, he was he was Freaks one of the guards. Freaks and Geeks. He was in Freaks and Geeks, who was 82 he, years old? Yeah, Joe Flaherty did a lot of great work, but SCTV, you know, if you think about yep. um, from 76 to 84. Yeah, yeah tremendous. Uh, the whole SNL cast in the original were all almost entirely uh, Second City alums and stuff. Colin Mockery and Ryan Stiles and whose line is it anyway? Second City alums. Uh, you know, I know we're going down another little tangent, but Second City, uh, you know, the Belushis, but going back, whether the Chicago, the Toronto troupe produced so many great yeah. comedians and, and improvisational folks and just just tremendously funny people and joe flaherty with andrea martin martin short um you know um who's the mom on schitt's creek i can't uh, catherine o'hara catherine uh, o'hara that's city. eugene show. levy also was second city tv rick moranis uh, uh dave thomas remember uh, great white north so if, if you haven't seen second city tv i think the i think the shows are on youtube every now and then i'll watch like part of an episode and and it's just it really was so so good so yeah no that was it was a good show he was also on happy gilmore he was uh the heckler oh, Don the heckler he was, he was exactly he's one of the hecklers right. in happy gilmore right before um, the bob barker fight i believe which is also yeah. a classic classic quick question game. one more quick question about the sure. um the um eclipse before we go here uh schools are closing their schools closing because they're afraid uh, they want to send the kids well, schools I, I close when i fly for it these days but like, why would you send? Why, why would you send the kids home where there may be not any parents anywhere, and they're going to look at the sun when you can have them in school? Like, and, oh, and this, have it's it a great, it's a great lesson. Yeah, it's a great science lesson. Day, make your projector boxes like we were talking about. Right. Talk about how the 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 planets have and 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 satellites and the orbits and and the geometry of it all. I mean, it's just ellipses. I mean, there's so many things you could discuss. Perigee, apogee, all of it. I mean, it's just yep. such a great teaching opportunity, but but for whatever reason, these folks are afraid of their shadow. My my dad, when um, I was got seventies and eighties, he would say it was amazing school administrators could stand because there were a bunch of invertebrates. So. <laughs> Well, Howard, thank you so much. You're always so much fun to have on. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up the idea. It was his idea to talk about the eclipse. He was like, what about the eclipse? I was like, oh, the eclipse. Oh, oh, before we go, can I make one side point to something we should have said earlier? Yeah. Just real quick, real quick. You know, Rona, uh, Rona McDaniel, the former RNC chair, got the yeah. name right? Rona McDaniel. Hired, Rona McDaniel, who was fired and hired, hired and fired in, in, you know, 14 seconds by MSNBC. Did anybody else think, this is the network of Al Sharpton, and look up to Wanna Brawley if you don't know what I'm talking about. Yep. Right? And and we won't even talk about any other anchors and potential racist rants and, and anti white or anti male mm -hmm. rants they've gone on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Al Sharpton, in and of itself, if this network can justify Al Sharpton, uh, in the words of Rush the Reverend, Al Sharpton, how can they how can they throw a hissy fit over Ron McDaniel? How can you be so subjectively biased yet yet you've got al sharpton on your bench yet ronna mcdaniel's the bad yeah. person here 
he's on their team. But also remember, Rachel Maddow told us that if you get the vaccine, you will not get COVID and you cannot pass it on to anyone else. So right. you have to get it to keep other people safe and it would keep you safe right. too. You will not get COVID if you get the right. vaccine. Now, she probably believed that at the time, but once, but did she ever correct the record, right? And yeah, I can see somebody course. saying that because that was the current information, that was the belief. But when you realize that things have changed, I think you have an obligation to set the record straight. And I don't yeah. believe she ever set the record straight. No. And that's where you can find fault right. in that. You can't All do right, that sorry. because then, because then, you know, you, you could, we could say the same thing about like, well, you held Trump to that standard, but now that we know differently, you know, that whole thing. Uh, Porchview okay. Farm says, my view box is ready. Uh, watching your back says, seeing Maddow's reaction when Trump won was glorious. I Every now and then I go black, I go back and I play that. Um, there's a compilation on YouTube of oh, that Oh, the night. shocked and sad of, and just, just completely dismayed uh, yes. press people who are media people who are just besides themselves, probably didn't exactly. sleep for a week after it. Yeah, it's it's a Trump compilation 20, uh, 2016 election of election night. And because we're I was watching our neighbor's house and we had um, CNN on in the kitchen, Fox News on in the other one room. And we just kept going back and forth and people were going back and forth. And we were up till three o'clock in the morning and it was just mayhem and craziness. And then people were like, oh, my God, Trump, let me just, oh, my God. And it was and it was just but the, the compilation that I'm talking about is they have this music behind it that is really funny. It's like, there's no way Trump could win. It's impossible. It's statistically impossible. Do, 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 the Nate, the Nate do, Silver do. odds, right? Uh, right. At 95% oh, for Hillary. Whatever. Right. That Trump's going to win. Oh, when Ann Coulter said, who do you think is going to win? Ann Coulter said Donald Trump. And the audience laughs at her. She goes, and they're all laughing at her and mocking her. And they're mocking all these Trump supporters and everything. And then the music starts. Do, 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 do. And you see, and they get the election night. And you start to see it all come in. It's, it's fantastic. It's I was in awe. Everything. I remember it so vividly that night, thinking to myself, <sighs> somebody has <sighs> broken through. Somebody from the outside has broken through. And, and I thought when he gave his speech at 3 something in the morning, I said, wow, he actually sounds presidential. Of course, I don't think he behaved that way very long after that. But for a brief glimmer in time, he actually, he, 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 he walked the walk and talked the talk. And I think had he continued to walk the walk, talk the talk, he wouldn't have been in the problems. He would, he would not have well, invited so much of the negativity that he has on himself. But how can you say that when we know that they were spying on his campaign in 2015 when he came down the escalator? They were already spying on him. They, oh. they, were, they were already, the DOJ and the FBI were talking to foreign governments. We now know the five eyes, <laughs> which is why we know the, the um, Australian ambassador spoke to um, George Papadopoulos trying to set him up. Yeah. The guy from Austria, Australia. We know, we already know that they were already, so they would, they were never going to give him anything. It didn't matter how he spoke. And I don't know when people say presidential, what that means. What does presidential mean? That he's polite when he's lying to me? I mean, is that what presidential means? I, well, I, don't I think know. you carry yourself in a way, I, you know, sometimes when you are mocking people or mocking opponents and stuff, which, which Trump certainly has a, a, a way of doing. I think sometimes he does say things that, are detrimental to his cause and, oh, but, and but, if he but. could have a little bit more restraint i think i think those people i think there'd be fewer never trumpers if he well, uh, not, and we're not talking about the people who are on his side you always have to convince the people that aren't on your side to be mm -hmm. on your side it's the it's the it's those people that you don't really bring into the fold as easily if you are being so bombastic or whatever you want to call it in people, my opinion and this is what I say to people who say that, who because the same people loved Obama, loved him. Oh my gosh, everybody loved Obama. Obama was great. And I'm like, he's the guy who takes you out to dinner, tells you he loves you, can't wait to see you again, screws you, and then never calls in the morning. That's Obama. But jo Donald Trump takes you out to dinner and goes, yeah, you know, I'm not feeling it. You're too fat for me. I'm never going to call you again. And walks in the door. Oh, he's so mean. I hate him. He told you well the truth. No, no, I, I, I hear everything what you're saying. And certainly we can go back to the Professor Gates incident and many things where Obama quickly uh, made judgments that ended up being detrimental to, you know, national discourse, in my opinion. Um, but but he did it with a smile and he did it with a certain bit of grace and class and people were right. He didn't seem to understand the, the, the harm that was being done because it was delivered in such a nice way.
or by such a nice man who they all love. So I get you. I get you there. I just, I just think it's a fine line to walk where you want to motivate and inspire your base, but you got to bring new people into the tent too. And if you are being standoffish or whatever, a lot of people, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong, right. but it's a turnoff. It's a turnoff. I, and, I listen. And once I get you it. get it to office, that's one thing, but you know, I, I agree with that. I will say two things. Um, number one, uh, as I, as I said to my aunt, as I said, my aunt, he's not, not coming over for dinner. So who gives a rat's ass what he, what he acts like as long he's our, he may be a bastard, but he's our bastard. It's kind of like the difference between Chamberlain and, and Churchill. Everybody loved Neville Chamberlain. He was so nice. Yeah, how did peace not work out for him, that moron? He gave Hitler Poland. He was so nice. He averted war by giving Hitler Poland. It was yeah, great. I don't think the Polish right. people appreciated Neville Chamberlain that much. But the British people loved him. You know who the British people hated? They hated Churchill. He was a drunk. He absolutely had a drinking problem. He said horrible things to women, terrible, th horrible, misogynistic things to women. He was considered a, a bore. He was considered outlandish. He was a gambler. He died poor. He, he had a lot of flaws. But you know what? He saved Europe. So I look at it and go, Trump may be a bastard. Trump may be a, a, a horrible person. He may be rude. He may be whatever, fill in the blank, but he's ours. So who gives a crap? That's number one, you know, and number two, you're not voting for class president. You're voting for the president of the nope. United States. Who cares about personality? Vote As on Bob, You know, Bob Gino, who I listen to occasionally, does say, don't ever fall in love with a politician. Fall in love with a policy. Because right. politicians come and go. Right. And, and they're just a human being. They're flawed. They're fallible. And if you are falling a politician, then you're, 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 it's like a cult thing. Don't be a cultist. You know, exactly. So I, be I an think adult, that regard, yeah. be an adult, vote on the policy, not the quarterback is going to give you a free candy after lunch in high school. But your if, 401k if Mary is, is off the charts now. The stock market is up and you know, right. the, the, the GDP is great. And all of these things that Biden just isn't getting credit for, and right. as I tell people, well, the cost of living is still tremendous. And a lot of this was built on borrowing. And at some point, whether you like it or not, or realize it or not, you know, we're going to have to face our fiscal reckoning. And, you know, yeah, right now at this slice of time, things are at near all time highs. And the, oh, today was a pullback. Uh, not but, all time you know. highs. Highs during from from Biden's presidency. No, not even, from Trump. No, but even, even but the stock market is, I believe, at all time highs. The, 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 last week it hit. The, the major indices last week hit all-time highs um, beyond beyond Trump's presidency. They hit all-time highs. But a lot of that is built on the growth in the federal government and the expansion of public spending, not the private industry's expansion. You know, you've got- um, look, One quick thing here, I'm United sure. for Trump 2024. Georgia said, do I have permission to take that clip and post on my Facebook page? That's not my clip. Uh, go to Wall Street Apes, Wall Street A-P-E-S, that's their clip on their page, and all you have to do is retweet it out. Yeah, so, or copy the link to that on X and put it on your right. Facebook page, and people will exactly. be able to link to that. Yeah, oh yeah, on your Facebook page, right. Thank you for paying attention yep. and pay attention to that. Thank you. Okay, we're out of here because my cats want to eat, and we're uh, okay. we're uh, about 10, not quite 10 minutes over, but we're good. We're doing good. Thanks for so. Well, I'm a, I'm a chatterbox. It's my fault. Blame me. I will. I'll blame you. <laughs> thank Mary, you so thank much, you for everyone. asking me. Don't forget, Howard, where can people find you if they want to find you? Uh, in, a, in a cave and I'll tune it. No, um, I am at uh, HBWX on Instagram, I think, HBWX1 on Twitter. HB because WX is weather. So right. if you, if you, so basically Facebook, uh, X, Instagram, I'm not doing the. Uh, You're on Twitter. The, the, I don't, I, right. And that's, uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I can tell you who real fast. You're um, HBWX on Twitter. Is it, is it, 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 it? Yeah. Yeah. HB at HBWX for HB weather. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's always a pleasure. I'm always flattered that you asked me. I'm and shocked to, that you asked me to come back. <laughs> I, you, you figure one time it's an experiment, but she asked me back. Wow. <laughs> this uh, is the second time you're back. You've been on three times. No, right. Exactly. This is, this is yeah. appearance number three. All right. So, so do me a favor. I'm going to, I'm going to do this here. Um, you and I don't, don't hang up. I need to talk to you off the air. Um, I'm in trouble. See, I oh, don't know. No. Oh, I was referring to a clip of you calling Trump a bastard. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Feel free. You can, you can use that clip. From here. That's <laughs> me. He may be a bastard, but he's our bastard a hundred percent. Sure. That's fine with me. Um, yeah. 
feel free, knock yourself out, United for Trump 2024. I would be honored. If, but please put a link in for the for the podcast as well in case people want to see the whole thing, if you would do that. Um, now Tax USA says, I'll keep my eyes wide shut for the eclipse so we can see Mary next week. Thank you. And Porch View Farm says, we love Howard as a guest. So. Well, thank you, Porch View Farm. I'm, I'm flattered you, uh, for that as well. And she's a regular. So there you go. All right, Thank we're out of here. Hang on, don't go anywhere. And I'm going to say goodbye to everybody.